In uh, this episode, we're going to head out wide chasing some ruby snapper. We'll head out now through the passage into about 300 metres of water. We'll show you what we look for on the sounder and hopefully we get some fish. So let's go. using this Dye Omega Twin Thousand. Um, we've got 80 pound braid on this one and running on a straight but live fibre 15 to 24 kilo stroker rod. Um, for the rig it's pretty simple. I've got 120 pound main leader coming down to the tri-crane. On the top I'm using a flashing crystal light. These start glowing as soon as they hit the water. Off that, I've got a foot dropper of 200 pound line to this one here is the Savage 3D Squid. Um, they're pretty recent to the market. The reason why I'm used trying these ones is because they've got a really good action to them. And if you do happen to lose your bait, this thing here will still have a good lifelike swimming action down the bottom. I've got the top dropper about a foot and a half down to the bottom dropper. This is a slightly bigger Savage Squid. Change the hooks out to a 14 circle. And then I've got another about, I know, two to three foot of leader down to my weights. Depending on how fast the drift is, you have to change your sinkers depending. I um, usually like to use about 48 ounce up to 64 ounce. Sometimes I have to use slightly bigger. Once the bait's in the water, I continually back up onto the baits because um, I don't like letting heaps and heaps and heaps of line out. So yeah, keep the motor um, in neutral and then as soon as your baits start lifting up, use the reverse of your motor and back up onto the baits. You'll find that sitting on top of your baits like that, you won't lose a lot of ground and you don't need to have miles of line out. We're fishing in 300 metres of water and at max we'll have 350 metres out so we've got a losing 50 metres of line on the angle. So that's the rig, I'll show you how to set that rig up back at camp and um, show you how we crimp it all up, but yeah. fish. Ten sharks later, one ruby. Right, uh, just going to explain how uh, we use the electric rod and reel. A lot of people will pretty much have them set up in a rod holder, either bent butt or straight butt. And when they hook up, the first thing I see them do is flip the lever and let the, and let the reel crank the fish up. Now on smaller fish that can be fine, but on bigger fish with soft mouths such like ruby or grey band, that's the perfect way to lose your fish. Because if the fish is pulling and you're continually winding the electric reel up, the fish has got no give so the hook will end up wearing a big hole in the fish and then a good chance you'll end up losing it. I will say I use that technique if we're just pulling baits up. 
and I know that there's nothing on the end of the line, I'll happily put it in the rod holder and crank the electric lever. What I like to do is if we do have a fish on, I use a rod and reel a lot like a normal uh, manual rod and reel. Uplift, no wind and down using the electrics. That way you're not putting all the strain on the motor itself. Um, and if the fish does want to run or take line, you're not constantly feeding line up. Because if you're constantly just using the power of the electrics, you're going to find that it burns your reels out quicker and you also lose a lot of fish. chasing. Just got it up before the man in the grey suit. Caught about 10 sharks to one ruby today so happy about that one. That one there on the Savage 3D squid. Changed it over to a circle hook and run a strip bait of cuttlefish. And that's what we're trying to get. Woo! Happy with that. Oh, you can see here how it's been hit on the way up. Pretty stoked with that. There's dinner. So we're going to take this one back. We'll do another taste test on this one and give it a rating. It's one of my favourite fish to eat. We'll do the same what we've done in the previous episodes. We're gonna take it and cook it just plain, and we'll uh, we we'll cook this one plain and do a taste test on it. I'll uh, run through the sounder settings too now, and uh, let you know how we set up the sounder. Uh, you can just see the rubies coming up on the screen now, so I'll bring you over to the screen and show you what we're looking for. Righto, so. We've been fishing in 290 plus meters. We've got it set on 50 kilohertz. Once we get over about 100 meters, I always switch back over to 50. Seven times zoom, so we're only picking up the bottom 30 odd meters of water. And once you've slowed down, the two settings I play with is pretty much your colour and gain. The colour is only going to help you determine whether you've got a high density in the floor. So if we back the colour off, you see the bottom start lightening up. And what we're chasing is a thick dark red line on the bottom. As soon as it starts thickening up on the bottom, we know we're on some good ground. So normally when you slow down, so now we're at drifting pace when we wind the gain up. 
you don't want it too much noise on the screen I'll keep backing that gain off until I'm picking up these blotches on the bottom and that's the rubies we're chasing at the moment so we're on top of a big lump uh, the contour line drops off to about 315 meters and we're drifting along the top edge of that on about the 290 so that's what we're chasing on the floor there doesn't look like much but that's a school of rubies another thing with these sounders is if you go over a school of rubies like that we can put a marker on the actual school hit mark and save it as a waypoint so we can go back over it got our two rubies happy with that we'll uh, head back to camp now and fill up these I'll roll some footage now of uh, some rubies that we've caught previously and uh, yeah let's get back to camp Yew. we are uh, cooked that last section um, we went back to camp and I wanted to run you through the rigs at camp and do the rest of the taste test and whatsoever but when we got back to camp we uh, ran out of battery on the main camera and we tried to film it with a GoPro and it didn't turn out too well so we decided to scrap that footage and do it properly when we get back home um, so yeah we'll run through the rig that we're using for the rubies now and after that we'll head into the kitchen and uh, we'll, we've just defrosted some of the ruby and we'll uh, do a taste test on it in there. For this rig we want to use 200 to 300 pound leader line. We'll need some aluminium crimps to suit your leader diameter. We'll need some heavy duty tri-crane swivels. 
we're dropping these baits a long way down so the last thing you want is your baits to be tangled up and spiral up on the way down. So these are a good option. The way these swivel set up is this side swivel is to run your dropper to your bait. I run the main line to the top or the bigger eye of the swivel and then follow your rig down off the bottom of the swivel. Circle hooks. Anywhere between 14.0 and 16.0 is a good place to start. So recently we've been trying out these new Savage 3D swim squids. Um, the reason why I like to use these is because if we do happen to lose a bait, these things have an awesome lifelike swimming action. A lot of the colours in the range have a heap of glow on them as well. Um, so that's the reason why I've been using these uh, most recently. But alternatively, in the past we've used glow squids similar to this um, and we'll run these above the hooks. So depending on what you can get hold of, both are a good option. Um, I've been running these small crystal lights. They, um, as soon as they hit the water they start flashing. This one here is um, quite a small light. I tend to like the smaller ones better because I find the bigger ones like this one here you turn them on by screwing the uh, lid shut. The reason why I like to use the smaller lights rather than these is that these tend to spin a lot on the way down and they can tangle your rigs up quite easily. And last but not least, you need a solid chunk of weight. Um, this one here is a 48 ounce and generally I'll use between 48 and 64 ounce for the bottom. Right, the reason for crimping uh, this leader is because it is 200 pound. So I like to run crimps because it keeps it nice and tidy. So a uh, quick tip, what I do when I am running crimps with heavier leaders is, see if I can do this on camera. So I'll run the crimp on, feed it through your bait or swivel, whatever you're doing. Feed the line back through the crimp. Before I actually crimp it, I like to just get a fire lighter and burn the end of the uh, lead line. The reason I like to burn the end of the lead line is that leaves a ball on the end and it helps to stop the line from sliding back through. So it will catch on the line so last but not least is just run the crimpers onto it. Right, so that's the rig done. Now on these, I'll run a small strip of uh, cuttlefish, squid, whatever really. Um, and because we're using these circle hooks, they don't have much of a gape on them, so you want to avoid sort of covering that top bit of the circle hook up because you want them to actually work how they're designed to. Um, so you want the fish to, you're not actually striking the fish, they'll come up and pick it up. And then as soon as a bit of tension comes on, that'll roll out their mouth and you always get like a lip hook with these. So when you're baiting up, just use a real thin part of the bait and have it hanging off the bottom. Better still if you can, use wax thread and uh, when having them hanging just below the uh, circle hook. So in the end you want to have a tri paternoster set up. Uh, we've got the first bait off the top of the swivel and as you work our way down the rig, second bait and then we come down to a third bait and then you wait on the end. In a uh, WA we're allowed three baits per rig and fishing 300 meters you want to drop uh, your full three baits if you can and uh, we're actually going to head over to the kitchen now we'll do a taste test on this ruby I think we're going to make some rice paper rolls with it for lunch we'll uh, jump into the kitchen now and we'll go give it a test Taste test. <laughs> Alright. So, 
Say that you got? Ruby. Still really good. Um, so we did actually do a taste test when we first caught it, fresh, and I would say fresh definitely four star. This is still really nice. It does freeze really well, um, but it's just not as good as when it's fresh. Um, it's not fishy. It's quite a nice firm texture with the deep water fish. They're actually really nice for curries and stuff as well because they tend to hold their shape. Still really good after being frozen. I thought it was going to be a little bit fishier. It's actually really nice still. It's really flaky texture. Um, yes, yeah, super good. I think I'm going to have to put up four star still. I think it's still a not really nice tasting fish. Good flavour. It's not too bland, but it doesn't taste don't have like an overpowering fishy taste to it either. So we're gonna do the same, like I said before, as we did with the barramundi. We'll cook it up um, in panko crumbs and make up some rice wraps. So we'll get into that now and have some lunch. Let's do it. Then your feelings of choice. What have we got here for today? So we've got some cabbage, fresh basil. We don't have a lot of fresh herbs today, but usually I love loading it up on the fresh herbs. So good. Some carrot. It's over your shoulder. This is a husky that apparently never gets fed. <laughs> Fresh onion. A little bit of capsicum. Yeah, pop in a little bit of tomato. And now my favourite sauces, definitely plum sauce. Plum sauce? Oh, I love plum sauce. Always need a good plum sauce. It comes out. Ooh, she was loaded up though. <laughs> I'll do it much. Don't put that much in there. This is also a really nice seasoning, soy seasoning sauce. Pick it up from your health food shop. And some hot sauce. You can load the hot sauce up. Load her up? Load her up on the hot sauce. So you've got it all together. The challenging part. Oh, I'm sure I've had a wrap on one of these things. <laughs> I have a bad habit of overfilling mine. Okay, wet from one end. Fold it over like so. So I keep the bottom half in. Now I'm definitely no expert. And then just fold it up like that and then just kind of like tuck it in nice and tight as you go. And then, this is not very pretty, but she's ready to eat. <laughs> Go on, slap it. <laughs> mm. 
Delicious? Mm hmm. Delicious. Delicious, healthy alternative way of eating a fish. We're going to finish up having lunch now. I uh, hope you enjoyed the episode. If there's any species of fish that you want us to try and uh, get on the hunt episodes, leave a comment below. Um, thanks again for the support, uh, tight lines, and we'll see you on the next episode. You.